Thank you, Pancho Man. Welcome back to day two, Breakfast with Bob from Kona and Huggos on Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by Master Spas, as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Deborah Wetsuits, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports Original Triathlon Brand, Quintana Roo Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenge Athletes Foundation, our next guest, Penny Slater, joins us. Penny, how are you doing? I'm good. It's great to be back on the Big Island. So when you got into this uh, silly sport, was it primarily from the Xterra side? Did you get into road first? What, was, what came first? Yeah, I got into mountain biking first, and then it kind of evolved into doing Xterras. And um, yeah, then post-COVID kind of found my groove in long course, and yeah. So with, with uh, Xterra, with, when you started with mountain biking, was the idea to just enjoy it or was the idea to try to go to the olympics and mountain biking what was a what was the plan ah uh, no it was just to enjoy it i grew up playing a lot of team sports and stuff like that and then um yeah we just had an off-road triathlon down the road in the mountains and i uh, tried it out and got the bug and, and loved it <laughs> yeah i love it yeah loved it and i saw at the world's uh, 17 2017 you were 11th and 18 you were 9th and 2019 8th so balancing both Xterra and long distance? Uh, no, I actually was predominantly only doing Xterra until 2019. Um, and then like COVID kind of came and I decided i would try and give long course a go. And yeah, so I haven't done, I've only done a few cross tries at home, but yeah, may, mainly been focusing on long course since then. Yeah, and with then, so in, I'm looking at 2021, you get fourth at Cairns. What was, was that Cairns, was that your first full? Yeah, that was my first full. Uh, the last 20 Ks of that run was definitely a battle for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you get fourth first time out. Yeah, yeah, it was good. And it was a good field there, like Sarah Crowley race and a few other girls. So I kind of surprised myself, actually. And that's kind of when I was like, oh, this long course thing might be for me. <laughs> well, in 2021, people couldn't come, right? You are sort of little yeah. landlocked. So yeah. you were racing Husky Ultimate and Geelong uh, and uh, Shepparton. So mm -hmm. basically you were, you were stuck at home. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Only like a few races that year because we were in and out of lockdown. So it was a bit, bit disrupted. Yeah, and then in, in 2022, you get fourth in, in Cairns. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, again, I'm good at fourth places. <laughs> yeah, you're, I was going to say, I see a lot of those in there, but I got a, you got a second at Shepparton. Um, and then, but you jumped into uh, Canadian, was that Canadian Open? In yeah, Canadian Open, yeah. That's a little bit of a, a, a wake-up call when you realize yeah. how fast these guys are. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I got the opportunity to race and it was like one of those things that you couldn't say no to I hadn't really been having a great year I'd just come back from a stress fracture but um yeah it was still amazing to race and see the caliber of the athletes we have across the 100k distance um yeah and the PTO's uh races are pretty uh high standard for sure totally high standard <coughs> and third at Sunshine Coast and so your first Kona 24th yeah were you happy with that uh, not really. <laughs> Short answer, no. <laughs> when you come back from that, uh, having a race, and a lot of times that's the last race of the season, mm. so you sort of evaluate and go, hey, what do I need to do? When you went home after that, mm. what did you feel like you needed to do to, to better here and just better as a triathlete? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think last year I let the occasion get to me a bit and I made a few silly mistakes out on the bike uh, with nutrition and stuff mm. like that. And um, I think Kona is maybe one of those races where you have to experience it first to know what it's really like. Um, and so, yeah, coming back this year, I've been prepared for the heat much better than last year. I've got my nutrition dialed in um, and hopefully I'll be much more relaxed and less stressed coming into race day. Well, second time around, you know what you're in for. There's, there's this, basically, these are the same people you race all the time, yeah. except there's more of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the fields are deeper. Yeah. That's really, you take this course, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's what makes this course so challenging is the competition. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, it's a world championships. You want to be racing the best in the world. And it's like cool to see where you stack up at the end of the day. And I think the course here, like there's no room for error really. Um, so yeah, hopefully when I'm running out on the Queen K on Saturday, I'll be feeling good. Not like I'm going to pass out. <laughs> So when you uh, you went to the Asian Open this year, uh, you got third at Cairns and third at South Africa. So your heat is something you seem to do well with. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, long course is one of those things that takes a while just to get used to the mm -hmm. training and the racing. And I feel like this year it's finally sort of ticked over for me and I feel like I can 
my body can handle the endurance and can actually hold up at the end of a marathon whereas last the last couple of years it's been breaking down a bit so um yeah, I think it's just going to take time and hopefully in the near future I'll be moving up the podium steps. <laughs> what, are, what are your goals for Saturday? What would you like to accomplish? Um, I guess the first thing is to like just try and stay relaxed and be in the moment and mm -hmm. enjoy it. Um, and then just execute my the processes that I have, uh, have to execute to have a good race. And I think if I do that, you know, I can have... Uh, good performance and probably get in the top 15. Uh, I mean, top 10 will be amazing, but as we know, there's an amazing field here. Really <laughs> and even just feel. looking at the predicted top yes. 20 is like amazing. So, um, but also never give up because anything can happen out there, I think, here. So that's a prime example of that. More so than in any other race exactly. where we've seen people, you know, Paul Newby Frazier, seven time champion, collapsed within half a mile of the yeah. finish line. So anything can happen at any time. How did you prepare differently this year than last year for this race? Or did you? Yeah, I did. Um, I mean, last year I prepared at home in Canberra, which for those who don't know, it's like still quite cold there this time of year and just did heat chamber acclimation. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't find it the same as like if you spend the time. Real time yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've been in Northern Queensland in Cairns getting ready for the last six weeks. Um, so it's similar climate to here, maybe not quite as hot, but I definitely have felt, I got here on Thursday and felt that it's, I feel much better like out there riding and running um, than I did last year. So I think that's going to help a lot. The difference between an Xterra race, which is probably what, two and a half hours, something like that, to, yeah. to this where it can be you know, up to nine hours. Yeah. Uh, how did you adapt to that longer distance? Yeah, I mean, I think it's taken a while for like my muscle fibers and stuff to change. But um, I think physiologically, I'm probably more suited to long course. But yeah, Xterra is super punchy and always quite hilly. Right. Um, so I don't really have any sprint or anything left in me, which I used to have in the Xterra days. Um, yeah, and it's just taken time to adapt. Obviously, the riding style is completely different and running on flat surfaces and stuff like that. Um, but I still enjoy getting out on the trails, like being in nature is one of my favorite things to do. So, um, yeah, I still hit the trails all the time. When we were in Nice at the Ironman Worlds, Braden Curry, Brett McMahon, all these guys with huge Xterra backgrounds, they were loving the Nice course. They were like, this is as close to a mountain bike race uh, course that we've ever seen. And they, they just, the, all the climbs and the descents and the bike handling, I bet you're looking forward to Nice next year. Yeah, definitely. When I saw the men's race this year, I was like, oh, that's a course for me. So that's I'm really totally excited a good for course it. For yeah. you. <laughs> is it hard? Because you're, when you're doing mountain bike racing, you have to be on edge mm. all the time. Yeah. Roots and every, there's people that oh, I can relax on the downhills if you're on a road bike. Not on a mountain bike. You're, there's no relaxation. Is it hard for you to stay focused? When you're, when you're riding and doing Xterra, you are constantly on edge. And here, you sort of get steady state, diesel, just stay here yeah. and don't, don't, don't vary. Yeah, I think one of the things with Xterra when I did it is like, yeah, it's not as long a race, but it's really mentally taxing because yes. you have to be on the whole time. You can't afford to make a mistake because if you crash, you'll probably break your bike or something. So, um, yeah, it's different. And I think, like, hopefully that'll come back for me um, in Nice next year on the descents, like, because obviously people are going to be tired at that stage in the race, so it's going to be really important to be mentally sharp. I saw, saw your tattoo, Mandolo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that stand for? Uh, it means send it, so go fast, basically. Like in Australia, we say send it when we want someone to go fast. Really? So, yeah. Um, that's kind of like my little motto for racing um, is like to... Yeah, send go it. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Take a chance and um, see what happens. And uh, you'll be able have a lot of opportunity to take chances out here on, on Saturday. What do you look back at your best race ever? Um, I think I haven't had a perfect race yet across the long course, I would say. Um, I think the closest I've had probably is Cairns this year, although I didn't have the bike that I was that I should have had. Um, but I had a really good run there and my swim there was good too. So I, I, it's the first Ironman I've finished where I've been like, oh, like that's how it should feel right. on the run, you know. Like it was hard, but I felt like I could have kept going if I had to. So Yeah, oh, and that's, like you said, it's hot and you ran, what, 303 there? Yeah, 303. And yeah, you so. know now, you okay, if I'm 303, there's no reason I can't go 257, 258 and get yeah. under that three, which... 
that puts you in rarefied air when yeah, you start exactly. doing that off a good bike ride. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think it was just a really big confidence booster to me, um, knowing that I can run like that and that I was probably being conservative on that run. So that means that I have more in the tank, hopefully. And learning the fueling too, because obviously if you're feeling good throughout the run, you've, you're sort of getting the nutrition part down. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the thing that takes a long time you know it it's it's like the fourth discipline of triathlon especially across the full distance and um i think i finally started getting that nailed down so yeah it takes a long time to train yourself to have 100 and 110 grams of carbs per hour but once you can it makes a huge difference to your performance you have noticed a huge difference when you actually follow that yeah yeah definitely and like i just use it as a rule that i don't have any choice whether i'm going to do it like you just have to do it whether you feel like it or not and then at least at the end of the day, if you don't have the performance you want, you can be like, okay, well, I know my nutrition was fine, so we have to go back and look at other things. So when you uh, coming up with that number and figuring that out, obviously there's a little give and take on that. How did you figure out what that number was, how much you needed? Because every body is so different. Yeah, definitely. Everybody's so different. Um, I'm actually like a res I do a bit of research and have an exercise science degree. So I go based off of what the research said, which was like 90 grams. But if you can, um, if you can get up to 100, you can get up to 120. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is very personal. And I just started off at like 60 grams an hour, and then over the last two years, have sort of worked my way up. And I, your body adapts to using that much carbohydrates. I think. Um, so yeah, I definitely do that on the bike I mean on the run it's obviously harder to get as much stuff in but so yeah load up on the bike and then see how we go on the run I love it such a pleasure to get to meet you yeah thanks Bob. It's I great. appreciate <laughs> it Penny Slater has been our guest everybody Poncho Man take us out it's breakfast with Bob and Poncho Man!